Today I thought I'd make some coasters. These are end grain coasters, so they're made basically like you make an end grain cutting board. So I've got lots of strips of wood here. I've got some oak and maple and walnut and paduk and cherry and teak. You know, I've rated all my strips of uh, little bits of wood, so it's a good cleanup time. And like I said, it's basically made the way you make an end grain cutting board. So, you know, I'll glue up the pieces into blocks and then I'll plane them down, but instead of arranging them in a regular arrangement, then I will be trying to put them together in a random arrangement. Now the one thing that is really important is to make sure you have some contrasting woods. Let me bring the camera in close and I'll explain. These are two coasters out of the very first set that I made. The very first time that I made it, I was making things up as I went along and it turned out really well, I thought. You know, I lined up three some boards here and then I added a block on the side and a glue a block there and a block there. And I thought, cool, it's turning out nice. And then I, I slapped some finish on it and I looked at it and I realized this is boring. Like everything blends in together. And then I realized my mistake, you know, I'd, I'd used maple and oak in this and I, and I had a bit of yellow heart and I really like yellow heart, but here on the end grain, there's just not enough contrast. So then here is the next set I made. This time I made sure I had some paduk or jatoba and some walnut in there just to, to make sure you've got some color and some visual interest. You really, you really uh, look at this one compared to this one. You really, it, this is unfinished here. Look at this one compared to this one. And it makes a huge difference. Really important that you have contrasting woods. So there's a lot of standing and scratching your head as you decide what you're gonna do. I've already glued up one block, which has got cherry and maple and a little bit of strip of teak. And this is actually, it might actually be too big. I don't know if I'm gonna want something quite that big. So now here I've picked out a few more pieces of teak, maple, paduk, and I'm gonna glue up a smaller strip of pieces that I can then do together. So yeah, there's going to be lots of gluing and clamping and waiting and gluing and clamping and waiting and cutting and imagining and sorting and and uh, so yeah, there, there might be a lot of video montages in this thing. I don't know, or there just might be uh, I might just cut things really short and skip over the boring parts. One thing that's nice is you should be able to use little pieces because. To make a stack of uh, coasters, it's only about five inches high, so you don't need a long, long chunk of wood. In fact, I could probably get three sets of coasters out of something like this if I line up something that long. So you should be able to use little pieces and just, you know, just glue them end for end in your when you're putting the strips together. And then, and I'm rambling too long, so let's just skip to that and let's get gluing. I'm cleaning this out because after it dries, I want to try to try to fit a piece of wood in there, which is not something that you normally do when you're gluing, but for this, it's a 90 degree angle, so I should be able to get a piece of wood in there that uh, will help with the whole randomness of what I'm doing here. Just a piece here, piece there. Okay, here we are. It's been like a week since I started this because you glue a few pieces together and then you stop and wait. And then the next morning you glue a few pieces together and you stop and wait and you glue a few more pieces together. And then you try to start putting this block with this block and this block with this block. And every now and then 
you got to pull out your tape measure and you're like, okay, is it big enough yet? Is it big enough yet? Because I'm looking for about three and a quarter. And now I think we're done. It's time to square this up and start slicing off some pieces. And then we will really see what we've got. And here's what we've been looking for. I have some walnut here, I have some cherry here, and I have some bits of paduk. Lovely contrast. I don't even have any finish on this yet, but I'm pretty sure this is gonna turn out nice. Okay. So if you make these slices too thick, they're just gonna be too unwieldy. But if they're too thin, well, you know, they'll just snap, so. Here's a set that I made a little while ago, or a set. Here's one from a set that I made a little while ago. And this is a little bit more than 3 eighths, a little bit less than half. All right, here we go. So, here's why you make your blank really big. You got one with a knot, and there's the matching knot on the other side. Here's the one at the end where the wood just isn't, isn't, where is that? There's that, so anyways, I got three rejects here. And I got two sets of six. I've inspected them all carefully front and back to make sure there's no gaps or knots. And I made sure I cut two extra, and I still have at least one more set of six, maybe even a set of, uh, maybe even two sets if I combine these two spares, but um, I'm keeping two extra just in case something snaps when I uh, am working on the finishing. And uh, so now this is all end grain, so there's gonna be a lot of uh, sanding. I'm probably gonna put it in the belt sander and put on a 120 grit or something just to speed things up. Just look at those colors. So why polyurethane? And the answer is really simple, it's because these are coasters. And coasters means eventually they're going to get wet glasses put on them, which means you want some sort of water protection. And polyurethane is the simplest solution for that. And so here we are after several rounds of uh, polyurethane 220 grit, polyurethane 400 grit. Um, becomes a bit tedious at this point because you finish one side then you flip it over and finish the other side. You do the edges and then you get some drips that you have to deal with. But for curiosity here is the unfinished piece compared to the finished piece and even more striking here's the uh, original the very first time I tried making this and see how dull this is compared to here where we have the walnut and the white oak and the paduke and the cherry and the maple. The cherry, the cherry doesn't even show that much yet. This is going to uh, darken a lot more with time and UV exposure. Um, and uh, yeah, I think the results are beautiful and uh, well worth the effort. Definitely a fair bit of effort. And uh, I still have zoom out a bit here. I still have a block here. I could make a couple of more sets. Well, I think that's about as far as I'm going to take this one. I've got the coasters made. I think they turned out awesome. The next step's going to be making some storage boxes, but yeah, that's going to be in the next video because I think this video has gotten long enough. So as always, I'd like to thank you for stopping by and spending some time in my shop. Hope you found something interesting and enjoyable. And um, yeah, if you feel I've earned it, please consider subscribing and you know maybe tell a friend about it and we'll see you next time. And if you wanna see some close-ups, just stick around. I'll put some close-ups at the end of the video here.